right, so today we are working on a food van. A big pink food van. It currently has no brakes. But we gotta get it to the house. On a close course, of course. So we're driving very slow. And we're gonna use the curb to stop us. And it's cold out still. I'm so tired of it being cold. Oh, I know, my house is on a downhill. Oh, the brake wanted to work for a second there. All right, driveway is going to be a two man operation. So we got to wait for help. might just keep rolling down the street here. Stop. There we go. Yep, this is it. Dodge Sprinter. It's got a little diesel in it. But, uh... Our job is a generator rack back here. Probably throw a little step in over here. Just so it's, uh, you don't have to bring a step with you. But you're still able to walk in and out of the back of the van. We're gonna do an outlet here, outlet there, outlet up there. There'll be a wash basin there. Um, I think the freezer will eventually go up there. A window in that door for serving. All right, so we got the uh, back rack. Pretty far along here. We tied into these old uh, brackets that were for a hitch. Someone had removed and left the brackets, so. Got our step. We just have to cap the end of this tube as we did on the other side. We have our step here with a nice reinforcement underneath. And then some gussets on both sides for the generator rack. So uh, then these will go. Uh, let's see. Like that. And that'll help with movement this way and then we just cut this expanded metal and then we're going to throw that down where the generator sits Cut it. It's top just spinning. All right, 
right, so we just removed this door off the sprinter because the we're replacing this. As you can see, it's uh, broken. So undo the top, undo the bottom. And the rear one, you can leave on the door and then you just slide the door, at least on this one, out the back. Come lay it in your front yard. And then you just replace this and it just stays back on there. So when we put the door back on, feed that in the track, slide the door forward on the van, and we can reattach the new bottom and the, uh, the top one had already been replaced. So that's what we're working on now. Redliner probably makes this door twice as heavy. <laughs> With the back supported up. Huh? With the back supported up fine if you just want to do two. Oh. Well, I want to at least get one in. Down just a touch. All right, hold what you got. So what we're working on back here is this is going to be a platform for the fridge. We're just, uh, we got this brace up here, this one across here. So it gets the, the fridge off the floor and, uh, but it's still going to be low enough uh, that it doesn't, this doesn't contact it. So we've gotten pretty far along, got this countertop in over here, nice angle here. So with this door closed. Still gives you plenty of room to come up and get in the the van. These extension cords will be tidied up and they'll go down to outlets here. They won't string across, but this is for my for now solution. We anchored the lights to three quarter inch plywood that is screwed into the... So under this, all the way across is a piece of that three quarter inch ply, uh, two inches wide, uh, and that's the self-tapping screws through the wood into the metal uh, kind of roof supports and that allowed us to staple and glue this glue on or this uh, I think it's five millimeter ply into something this here is the serving counter uh, it's a little low because the van sits up so once you open the door uh, it's a little higher than you want to serve to a kid but it's about uh, adult height so you just have to hand over and then uh, I went up to the steel yard and got a nice piece of stainless steel to put on this counter here uh, because that's when you want to keep nice and clean and wipe it and keep it tidy and if you do like a painted wood uh, you know it just won't look as nice as a piece of stainless steel so I grabbed a piece of stainless steel from the steel yard we'll put that on top of that so we're gonna sand them all down knock all these corners off uh, these pain painful points make sure we're getting all the splinters out and then uh, once we're done sanding it, then we'll throw some of that that cabinet paint on. Under here is our water heater. None of this is plumbed in down here yet uh, because I'm just kind of getting the last of the components that'll be in here. But we have the water heater, the fresh water, and then there's the gray water. Reservoir, which I found out, uh, has to be larger than the fresh water. So this one's five gallons and that one is 10 gallons. Uh, let's see refrigerator over here. We swap the door handle around or the hinge more so so now it opens To this side of the van Instead of having to go to the outside. Those are really easy three screws on top two on the bottom The hinges swap and then there's plugs you pull the plugs out of one side and then when you remove the hardware You just plug them down into the open holes where you took the other screws out of This is not where this tank is gonna live. This is gonna end up being some shelving 
um, with an outlet tucked back in there, kind of invisible. It will go down in here, but like I said, I don't have all this worked out yet. What will probably go here is this portable AC unit. Uh, it needs a drain and then it also needs uh, a vent. And it's a big old vent hose. So, gotta figure that out yet. Don't have a solution. This is the water pump. Brand is Seaflow Series 33. Uh, and it's kind of with a built in pressure switch. So, as you turn on the sink, it will turn itself on. You don't have to worry about turning the pump on, turn it back off. It's got an automatic switch. Three bay sink, and then uh, still have to put this guy on too. But plumbing and electric is gonna go after paint. I think next is paint. Somebody used the wrong box. So we're just buttoning up the uh, the old snow cone van here. I just finished the the plumbing under the sink, the drain, and the supplies. Got the hot water heater installed, an additional outlet for the for the freezer because we have five power draws over here. So I ran uh, a four a quad outlet and then a, a a double outlet. So that was all covered, and then uh, the wrench to the plan showed up. 
Uh, apparently, the uh, apparently the inspector requires a fourth sink. So we have a wash, we have a rinse, um, and then we have a sanitized sink. Whatever all that means, I don't really know. But then we also need a hand washing sink. So, like I said, this showed up about 10 minutes ago. And uh, the only place we have left to really shove it is right here. Over the air conditioner. So, uh, we're going to see if we can still get this air conditioner to fit. It's just going to require a little bit of modification. And then some real good painting and sealing around this. Uh, so we don't have any water intrusion on our countertop. We got a tee off on our hot water and our cold water that goes to this faucet, bring it up under to this faucet, and then we got to work this drain out. Somehow tie that drain across into these drains down into the reservoir without completely reworking the system. This is what we have going on down here for the drains. These go to the three sinks and then comes down and goes into the gray water reservoir. This is our vent tube with a cap, just in case there's some sloshing. Uh, you can cap it off, but uh, if you don't have a vent on a tank like this, your water's gonna gurgle down in these pipes right in here. If you have, if you're draining this sink, it can pull air from here. But then once you get past this, you're gonna you're gonna potentially have gurgling depending on how much water you're you're pumping out of your faucet. So we have this drain here to allow pressure, air pressure out of the tank. Uh, this is this goes to our supply line, which will just be a five gallon water jug like uh, that one right up there. We're gonna do a draw straw on the lid. So at this point, we have to tee off of this line here and send it to the other faucet. And then this is our hot water uh, feed. And then this is our cold water feed down here. So we'll tee off of it and then run it out too. And I think that's our easiest bet is to just throw some PEX tees on these and then just send two lines heading down through a hole or this gap depending on what works best and then we'll just bring it up probably throw a couple more 90s here uh, and then just bring it up all this power is protected off it all runs into the uh the van here into this 20 amp gfci and then from this gfci to everything else so every plug in here is protected uh off of this gfci uh, this hole here is for the air conditioner vent and the air conditioner will go here uh, but now that we're i was going to make a platform for it to sit on off the ground but now we've got to make this piece right here go away and uh, i don't really have a good option i guess i'm going to go grab my coping saw and try and get as straight a cut as i can uh, because it's glued on and this is kind of just uh what you have to deal with when things aren't in the original plan so and then uh you can see here i secured the water tank with some tubular webbing and an anchor there fender washer and then another fender washer over here so this tank is nice and secured uh this hangs off of its own bracket that keeps it nice and secure and then we still need to do webbing to go up over this keep it nice and tight uh, that might get more like a ratchet strap we'll see but we're pretty much out of time. I was trying to button this thing up today because uh, I leave town for a month in uh, day after tomorrow and I got a lot of stuff to do around the house too. So we got to get to work on this and get it done, get it out of the driveway so I can move on to the stuff I need to do at the house.
before we painted well first off we put down the tape uh, then we laid a very light bead of caulk wet your fingertip if you're not aware of that it makes caulking a lot easier uh, if you keep your fingertips wet then you just slightly drag your finger along like I said it was a very light bead you don't want too much too much makes a mess you just need enough to, to seal it so you drag your finger along on a very light bead wet finger and then uh, we left the tape down and then once that caulk dried uh, we hit it with some paint and I think it turned out great and now it's all sealed so there shouldn't be any water intrusion of the owner uh, we riv nutted into this door with some anchors that we pulled out of the back they're just cargo anchors so we riv nutted uh, M8 and just used the same bolts and everything spacers put one here ratchet strap around and then we have one over here as well I don't know if you can see it it's right back there but now that's not going anywhere the deep freeze under here we have our hot water heater and our tank ratchet strapped to a couple of anchors. This is anchored down with the webbing as we saw the other day. We've got another outlet up over here coming out that side for the deep freeze. This is our quick water, our, our uh, quick release water. You just turn that ball valve off so that you don't have a problem with backflow draining the system. Uh, so you turn the ball valve off and then you just just like your air hose. Just like that. Moving up here, we've got the air conditioner installed. It has to stick out a little bit because of the change to adding a sink over here. So we have to avoid this. Uh, we have an anchor on the back, ratchet strap around up to here. So it's not going anywhere. And then same with the fridge, anchor down there and then an anchor up inside above it. So it's not going anywhere either. If we have a problem with the door coming open in the future, it's as simple as a uh, an endless loop off of this around here. And then we'll just put another anchor in over here and uh, we can just throw a, a bungee cord around it. We've got this countertop angled, so we've got a nice entryway, not uh, something that is not too congested. Nice countertop over here, plenty of storage space down on the floor, and then another whole one here, and it's high enough that the, uh, the syrup bottles can fit into the shelving. Here's our serving platform stainless steel top like we discussed so we can keep it clean and the usable height for customers so while we had it we uh threw some new exhaust on here because we had no exhaust threw a hanger in there a uh, little 45 and then it comes out the side of the van uh, it used to literally just dump in front of that cherry bomb because everything was rusted away for the exhaust, so. might be a little throaty for a snow cone truck but I think it sounds pretty cool it's two and a half inch exhaust into a two and a half inch cherry bomb glass pack it's not technically a cherry bomb it's uh what is it 
It's a Red Hot Flotec. It's like a $30 cherry bomb, which cherry cherry bombs aren't exactly expensive themselves, but this was uh, what the store had, and I needed everything now. This was one of those projects where I got it on a Sunday, and today is Friday, and I needed to be done with it yesterday, because uh, like I mentioned before, I'm heading out of town for a month, and I had to get some stuff ready around the house, but I've managed. That's how life works. Uh, it's, you can always handle a little more than life throws at you. So I think this turned out great. I know the owner is ecstatic about it. I'm ecstatic about it. I mean, this is just night and day different. Uh, I know she probably didn't expect it to turn out like this, and I'm not gonna lie, I didn't really know what to expect either going into this, because uh, it started out as a sink and electricity install, and then I kind of talked her into some other stuff, and then she had some new requests, and it transformed into this, and this is awesome. I think there's gonna be lots of snow cones sold out of that door this summer. Ah, what's your favorite snow cone flavor? I don't know. I like uh, Dragon's Blood, I think is what it's called. I don't even know what's in Dragon's Blood. I think that's what it's called, but that's my favorite. Next would probably be like a Blue Raspberry. Uh, and then maybe to like something like a Strawberry, but uh, let me know what your favorite snow cone flavors are. We'll make sure they make their way on this truck. That pretty much wraps up this build, so uh, let's get to those other projects that I mentioned.